Welcome back to the Youth Bible Mon Year, day 264. Have you ever been tempted to give up? Well, today's topic is never give up. We're told this because we have a future hope, a hope in Jesus. So, how does this affect our lives? Why should we never give up? Let's find out today. So Winston Churchill has been described as Britain's greatest ever leader. He lived a long, heroic life, and he rallied a nation with his inspiring rhetoric. One of the most striking parts of his biography is that he had to resign from the Admiralty during World War I over the failed Dardanelles campaign. He had failed spectacularly, yet he was to learn not to give up. I was told that once, when he returned to his old school, Harrow, to address the boys, the whole school assembled to listen to his words of wisdom. The great man arose to speak. Young men, never give up. Never give up. Never give up. The entire speech lasted only a few seconds. Then he sat down. No one present ever forgot his words. That is at least the popular version of the story. Churchill did indeed say words to that effect, but as part of a longer speech. Towards the end he said, Never give in, never give in, never, 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 in nothing, great or small, large or petty, never give in, except to convictions of honour and good sense, never yield to force, never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. In today's generation, our lives have become so instantaneous that anything requiring patient perseverance can appear unattractive. We require instant returns and instant results. But sometimes the biggest payoffs are a long time coming. From Proverbs 23 Do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is surely a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. Never give up being enthusiastic. Do not let your hearts envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. St. Paul wrote something similar. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. We should be as enthusiastic as the day we first encountered Jesus. As Bear Grylls says, be the most enthusiastic person you know. Enthusiasm sustains you when times are tough, encourages those around you, and is totally infectious. Many years ago, I wrote in the margin next to these verses, I'm feeling rather envious of the people, my work colleagues at the time, and their work. This is the Lord's word to me, not to be envious, but instead to be zealous for him, and he promises a bright future. Praise the Lord for that promise to cling to for my work. Lord, help me never to be lacking in zeal, but to keep my spiritual fervour. Thank you that you promise a bright future. New Testament from Galatians 6 Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone, without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Never give up doing good. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. 
As Paul reaches the end of this letter, he encourages the Galatians to work together as a team. If someone is going off the path, seek to restore them gently, but also watch yourself, lest you be tempted. You are responsible for your own life. Each one should test his own actions, for each one should carry his own load. We also have a responsibility for other members of the team. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Paul assumes we all have burdens. The word used means heavy burdens. It's a wide-ranging term that includes suffering, illnesses, physical disabilities, sorrows, grief, worries, responsibilities, financial and other, temptations, errors, doubts, weaknesses and failures, moral and others. In other words, it includes any and every load that is hard to bear. One of the ways in which Jesus bears these burdens of yours is through human friendship. This was the way in which Titus helped to bear Paul's burdens. I like to be independent and self-sufficient, not relying on other people. But I am designed to be a burden to you, and you are designed to be a burden to me. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. I can only say that in my own life I am so grateful to those close friends with whom Pippa and I talk and pray regularly, who have helped us at times when the burdens have seemed too heavy for us to carry alone. We have been through many things together, suffered together and rejoiced together. All this has helped to spread the load. The object of the team is to carry on sowing good seed. People reap what they sow. Those who sow to please their sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. Those who sow to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. St Paul wrote to the Galatians, Do not give up. The temptation is to become weary in doing good. But the promise is that you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. Take every opportunity to do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. There are many discouragements around. There are huge temptations to give up. When you sow a seed, you do not see the results immediately. It takes time. Sometimes it's only when you look back years later that you can see that the seed you've sown has finally borne a harvest. There are also many seeds sown about which you may know nothing until you see the harvest in heaven. One of the keys to saying positive is to keep an eternal perspective. Paul never gave up preaching the simple message of the cross of Christ. He kept on going and he kept on sowing. He refused to add or subtract from the message. He also refused to preach a more popular message in order to avoid persecution. As a result, he was persecuted. He wrote, I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. Lord, help me to keep on sowing, keep on doing good, and hold on to your promise that at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Old Testament from Isaiah 49-51 to In the time of my favour I will answer you, and in the day of salvation I will help you. He who has compassion on them will guide them, and lead them beside springs of water. I will turn all my mountains into roads, and my highways will be raised up. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast, and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. I will contend with those who contend with you. And your children I will save. Never give up trusting in God's love. Each morning, Isaiah waited on God to speak to him and to instruct him so that he would know the right words to sustain the weary, to encourage those who were tempted to give up. In this passage, the way he did this was by speaking to them about God's love for them. He spoke of God's compassion. 
and he used five analogies for God's love. First, shepherd. God loves you as a shepherd loves his sheep. God, as the shepherd of Israel, will lead his people back out of exile. In his love, he will make even obstacles serve his purpose. Jesus picks up this picture of the good shepherd and applies it to himself. Second, mother. God's love for you is greater than any mother's love for their child. Can a mother forget the infant at her breast, walk away from the baby she bore? But even if mothers forget, I'll never forget you, never. Third, engraver. The Lord says, I have indelibly imprinted, tattooed a picture of you on the palm of each of my hands. The Babylonians used tattoos to remind them of the person they loved. God's love and commitment to you is demonstrated by his engraving of you on the palms of his hands. Fourth conqueror. God's love is like a conqueror. He is strong enough to carry out his purposes for you and to fight against those who oppress you. Fifth, husband. The people were saying God had divorced them because of their sins. God replies that although it was their weakness and their sin that caused the exile, God is able to restore them. He has not divorced them or sold them into slavery. No one is too far out of God's reach. He's married to his people. His love for you is greater than the greatest love between a husband and a wife. Isaiah urges people to keep on trusting in the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. God will rescue them through his suffering servant. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore have I set my face like flint. Jesus, knowing he was going to be mocked and spat upon, set his face like flint and went to Jerusalem knowing he would be crucified there. He was utterly determined. He did not give up. God vindicated him. The result was a great victory and a great harvest. Lord, thank you that those who put their trust in you will never be disappointed. Help me to keep on trusting in your great love for me. Pepper adds, Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not become weary of doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. It is so easy to become discouraged when there's no obvious change in a situation or the person you're trying to help seems to be getting worse. This verse says keep going, tempting as it is to give up, for you will eventually reap a harvest. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you're always with me. Lord, thank you that I should never fear because you're always on my side. Lord, I'm sorry for where I have given up, for where I've stopped following you. Help me today. Give me strength by your spirit to walk in your ways, to not give up and to keep true to your words. I pray all these things in your name. Amen.